But we begin this hour in the Middle East, where three suspected Palestinian assailants have been killed by security forces after they opened fire at a checkpoint near Jerusalem. According to Reuters, six people were injured in the attack, and at least two of the gunmen were members of Hamas. This comes as Israeli soldiers continue their operation at the Al-Shifa hospital complex in Gaza. The IDF released a video it claims shows Hamas's weapons and military equipment inside the building. CBS News has not verified those claims. So joining us now uh, with the latest from Israel is CBS News reporter Doug Williams. Doug, good to see you again. What is the current situation at the Al-Shifa hospital and, and what is Israel saying that it uncovered there? And Marie and Vlad, good morning. Uh, the very latest is we were just briefed uh, about an hour ago by an IDF official saying that the IDF are scanning every floor of Al Shifa Hospital in the heart of Gaza. The activity continues with the understanding that there are many other terrorist infrastructures in the building which are well buried. I'll get to that in a second. Weapons have been located, intelligence materials, military technologies. Uh, they believe all of those things were, were being used by Hamas military as a command center below Al-Shiva Hospital. Now, it is telling to note that uh, we have not been officially told one way or the other whether Israeli forces discovered tunnels underneath Al-Shiva Hospital. Again, that's sort of what they've been looking for. Every command center of Hamas uh, that they uncover, they seem to try and, and connect to this tunnel infrastructure that they believe Hamas has been using since the October 7th attacks. Uh, but uh, well buried, uh, we have heard reports from the Hamas-run Ministry of Health that they've been trying to bulldoze underneath that area to see what may have been connected and buried by Hamas. So the Israelis uh, say they found this uh, center for Hamas militants, but as of now, we have not been told officially that uh, tunnels were discovered there. And then earlier today, there was an attack at a checkpoint just south of Jerusalem. What can you tell us about what happened there? Yeah, reports this morning, in marie uh, of violence at the border and what the Israelis are calling a terrorist attack um, on the ground in Jerusalem. The Israelis say it was a group of terrorists they believed to be from uh, an area of the West Bank, and uh, they opened fire at a checkpoint. Uh, six were injured, uh, one critically. They say the shooters were killed but were heavily armed. They found magazines and several weapons in their car. Uh, the Israeli security agency is investigating, and I think this will be interesting uh, to learn whether the attack was meant to take place at that crossing or whether it was a, uh, a significant attack plan that was foiled that was meant for uh, inside Jerusalem, Anne-Marie. Mm, really fascinating, Doug. Uh, thank you very much. Well, CBS News has learned that Israel is considering a deal with Hamas that would secure the release of some hostages being held in Gaza. Our Ed O'Keefe is following this story for us from the White House. Ed, what are we learning? And Marie, good to see you again. Just to stress, this deal isn't necessarily finalized yet, is fluid and won't be final until the hostages are actually released. In this latest proposal, Israel would agree to a three to five day ceasefire and during that time, Aid would be allowed into Gaza and a group of the youngest hostages and women would be released to officials with knowledge, tell CBS News. Children are being prioritized as part of the first wave of a potential hostage release aimed at ultimately bringing home the roughly 240 people taken during the October 7th Hamas attack. In addition, one of the officials said that an unspecified number of Palestinian women and children held in Israeli prisons also potentially would be swamped. The politically charged negotiations have gone through various stages in recent weeks and stalled significantly around the time of the Israeli ground invasion in Gaza. But one constant has been prioritizing civilians, roughly 50 in particular, and releasing any Israeli military members also held hostage, according to one of the sources familiar. In recent weeks, there's been a flurry of activity with multiple administration officials dispatched to the region. Brett McGurk, who's a senior Middle East policy advisor for the president, has been traveling across Europe and the Middle East this week. And Qatar is constantly in touch with Hamas. The president has repeatedly cited their work on this. Among the roughly 240 estimated hostages, there are 10 unaccounted for Americans, according to the State Department. And in a disclosure, why Widely seen as meant to add public pressure, the White House revealed in recent days that a three-year-old U.S. citizen, a little girl, is among them. Anne-Marie? Absolutely heartbreaking. Hopefully she is one of those hostages on the list. Um, Ed, thank you very much.